I went to the Bible. I was raised by, um, yeah, well, well, I was in a strong Christian family. Why? My father is actually a Protestant clergyman. If you don't know what a clergyman is, he's kind of like a sheikh, but for Christians. Yeah? So he, so I, I was brought up by a missionary father. He was a clergyman. We were very strong Christians, but the thing is, is that my father was very open-minded. Yeah? And then I got into a very good college. It's called Boston College. It's run by Jesuit monks. So you know those, in those movies, you get those monks in brown robes? I had those on my on my campus. They were gardening and teaching and all this. So, but the but, but the thing is, is that they they were very um, neutral. They actually are one of the monks. Actually, was the one that told me that the Bible was put together. So I knew that since that I was a teenager. Yes. Yeah, so when when I became a bit older, I, I was very interested, of course, in my religion. So when I was looking into Islam, at first I was looking into the Bible. And I did exactly what Yusuf Essay did. I said, I can't look at translations, because English could be wrong. You know, because the English, every language has a set number of words. Some words you can't translate. Like my other language is Thai. There's some Thai words I can't translate in English. So I thought, okay, that, that has to be the same with whatever the Bible was in. What I'm trying to get at is everyone comes to Islam in a different way. We, we hear these stories of people um, learning about Islam or wanting to become a Muslim just by hearing the Adhan. Yeah, we heard the call for prayer earlier. The non-Muslims, it was pretty. It was very beautiful, right? I feel that is very beautiful. And some people, that's enough for them. Yeah? And then other people, they come to Islam because they travel. Yeah, they go to Turkey or they go to some um, country where there's a lot of Muslims and they're treated well. So they come to Islam through travel. Other people, they go on YouTube. You know, everyone's watching YouTube nowadays. You know? So it's not the same way for everyone. For me, it was through books. Yeah, for me, it was through books. I did get introduced to Islam a little bit in college. I did um, I, uh, comparative religions. So when I, when I started to learn about Islam here, I went back to the books. Number one was comparative religions. Number two was a short history and Christian history. Yeah. Number three was an explanation of um, different books that didn't make it into the Bible, and then I stopped. Why? Because I was I, I was at a point in my life where I wanted I wanted truth, the same as Yusuf they said. Yeah, we come to a point in our lives that we want truth. So I was looking for truth. I was looking for translations. I didn't find it. I was looking in history now. History, I found that Christian history, I'm going to talk from my point of view, yeah, because I was a Christian. I found that it was so bloody. It was so bloody. Number two, um, I looked, I started thinking, okay, now I have to look into the translations, I have to look into other things. So I was going back year by year, I was looking for the pure church. I wanted that one pure church that, you know, the early Christians, whatever they did, I wanted to do that. Because I knew that if I could get that pure church, then it's not corrupted. It's not something that man has put together. That's what I thought at that time. I didn't find it. I didn't find it. But I did think, Jesus, he wasn't a Christian. He was a Jew. Okay, fine. Some of the prophets, they were, they were Jewish. Some of the prophets, they weren't Jewish. So where were they? They were something. Right? So I set out to figure out what that was. And when, when a friend suggested that I go to a class on Islam, I found out that Islam and Christianity have the same roots. Wow. I was amazed because every single thing that I believed in, the Muslims have too. But they have more details. How come they have more details? Like the story of Adam? You know, in the Christian Bible, it's basically God made Adam. But in the Quran, there's, you know, God made Adam out of all these different colors of clay and then breathe, you know, the spirit into his body and all these details that just came to life. So um, that's part of the journey. Yeah, so this is the learning part. That's how I got interested in Islam. But that's not really the problem, problem solving part. I was a model, I was an actress. Um, I was on TV for the first time when I was 12 years old. 
the thing is, is that even though I look very successful on the outside, and you hear this a lot, right? A Hollywood star kills himself or overdoses on drugs. There's something about being so outwardly, seemingly successful that actually puts emptiness inside you. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. For a woman, at least. When you're a model or an actress, you are looked at from head to toe. I outsourced my self-worth to someone else. I was only good if someone else told me I was good. Yeah, I had no self-worth, and that's where the emptiness came from, number one. Number two, I don't know about you, but most people, most people I know are living with a lot of pain. Pain. You don't have to tell me, you think about yourself. You've been wronged, you feel that you have some kind of injustice. You know, people are going around, why is my life like this? I've worked so hard, I've tried to be so good. Why? I had a lot of that. I don't know if you have that, but I had a lot of that. And why was it that when I try to be so good, so many people take advantage of me? Where is my justice? Where is my justice? Where can I get rid of this pain? Who can I look to? Because whenever I look to a person, they add to my pain. They don't take away that pain. So now there's emptiness. There's pain. I needed to, a way to get rid of that. And how did I usually do that? I turned to Christianity. But now it was out. Yeah, remember, I, I had read too much and now it was out. So now where do I turn? My option at that time was to look into Islam. What I found was exactly what, what I needed. I found a place where I could take away and I could understand my pain and I could feel my emptiness. That emptiness, a lot of it, was knowing that if I accepted Islam, I become a part of this beautiful big family who calls each other sister and brother around the world, no matter what race you are, no matter what age you are, no matter where you're from. And as a Muslim woman, you're clearly identifiable. Yeah, you're clearly identifiable. No one will mistake you for a non-Muslim. So people will you even if you don't know who they are. So you're a part of this family. You have support. Yeah? That's part of filling the emptiness. Number two, the pain. Now this one is a little bit abstract. But if you can believe that there is a God, and that God made you, and if you can follow that thinking, that God also knows every single thing about you, every single thing about your life at every single moment. So there's at least one person that knows exactly what I'm going through, what you're going through, what pain, what injustice, whatever that you feel like you're struggling in your life, God knows, Allah knows about it. Allah knows. And that's that gave me comfort. It really did that. At least one person know. And the amazing thing is that one person that knows everything also has a solution for me. Yeah, so that took care of emptiness, that took care of pain. And that was huge for me when I was looking for something. The last point I wanted to make, and this was one of the mistakes that I made when I was considering Islam. And this is, um, I think I'm almost out of time, so um, I'm very much a perfectionist. Very much, I want to be perfect. That's one of the, actually that's one of the reasons why I wanted Islam, because I want to be perfect. I don't want to know what to do, exactly what I have to do to, to, you know, to be good, exactly what I have to do to get to heaven. Okay, so one of the mistakes that I made as an almost Muslim at that time was to think that I have to know everything. No, you don't have to know everything. You don't need to know how to pray yet. You don't know, need to know how to do this yet. You know. You don't need to know how to, you know, speak any Arabic yet. Not at all. Don't put the burden on yourself. Yeah. Know that everything is a journey. Everything takes some transition. Just like what Brother Fred does. You can't be an angel overnight. No. Everything takes some time. 